What's up, y'all? It's Friday, September 25th, and FedEx just dropped this off at 12 noon today. So let's see what my friends over at BH have decided to send me. I mean, I know what it is. I mean, I think you know what it is. It's only the dopest camera that everybody's been waiting on for some time now. Now, you all know, I've been rocking with Sony. And, uh, looks like I'm still rocking with Sony. What does that say? Sony what? A7S III in the building. Nothing else in the box but the receipt, which I like to keep all my receipts with the materials that I buy, just in case I'm on the resale tip. Uh, 35 millimeter full frame, 12.1 megapixels, ISO from 80 to 102,000. 12400 um, phase detection 759 autofocus points real time eye autofocus real time tracking 4K 120 over 100 feet. Ooh! 422 10 bit MPEGH with that H265 16 bit raw HDMI output optical steady shot. I'm, I can't wait to try that. Let's get into it. I just want to show you guys how if I swap this box on top, this is the Sony a7 III, this is the a7S III, even the box is bigger, so you know it's a bigger camera. If you look at it and go side by side with the specs, the full frame rate of the a7 III is 24.2 versus 12.1. ISO range is greater on the A7S3. Phase detection, 753 autofocus points on the A7S3 and 693 on the A7 III. Real-time autofocus is presented in the A7S3 and there's just eye autofocus in the A7 III. This has five access steady shot inside. This has the optical steady shot in active mode. Uh, both of them are touch focus. Dual, you know, both have dual slot. This has a CF Express Type A, as well as, well as the SDXC UHS 2. That's for those uh, for the heavy lifting. Like if you're gonna shoot 4K and 120, you need that CF Express. And they're not cheap. I looked at the price up. They're not cheap. So in comparison, this you can keep your A7 III and do more photography with it and appreciate the value of these those extra megapixels this is just a beast when it comes to recording video i'm still not ready to unbox it so give me a second y'all. so i guess it's time to unbox this thing huh all right so check it opening up the box you get the usual Sony language, warranties, booklets on how to use it. Set that off to the side. Here we have a mount of some sort, which I'm sure to get directions for that. Ooh, USB-C. Nice. Because it charges via USB-C. Right, the next layer, we have a nice A7S strap, so people know what you're using. It's around your neck. As a video shooter, you very rarely use that, but nice to have. Let's go over here. Got the battery charger. It takes the same battery as my A7 III, so I'm cool on that. In that same compartment over there, we have the small charging cable for that. Um, the cool thing is I have the charger that you just kind of plug into the wall, so 
and I've got a base charge for them as well. So now for the <laughs> star of the shizzle. Now before I open, I want to make sure there's nothing else in the box. And that there is, there's nothing else in the box at this point. So let me put the box over here. It comes in this nice little package, and it is heavy. When I say heavy, I mean it's because I, I have the A7 III. But look at that. These look like uh, from from uh, the Peak design, because I have the Peaks on, on the, uh, well you guys can't see it, like I said, I'm shooting on the A7 III now. Um, this is such a game changer uh, from every aspect, from vlogging to uh, setting up shots when you're the primary person. Like right now, I'm actually using the Blackmagic Assist as a monitor, but the crazy part is the Blackmagic Assist that I have is not the 4K model, so you can't view 4K footage, which is what I'm shooting. You can't even see it. The, um, this feels good, man. So it has the lock to change, which is not on the current A7 III. They have, uh, let me see, battery release on the left. This is a, oh, it's pretty cool. Now there are doors, actual physical doors on the left side for audio input and monitoring. There's a dedicated button on top now for record and shooting. We have the uh, still four customs, custom buttons for it. And I'm just looking at, you know, just doing a look over right now. But here's your A7S3, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm actually taking a trip, so I will be able to enjoy this in Miami and in Texas and I'll review it and get back to you after that. Yo what up it's your favorite green eye bandit and I just wanted to bring to y'all attention five things you might want to know about the Sony A7S III when you're getting started. Um, of course they're sold out that's not one of the things um, but they're sold out right now and uh, if you hadn't pre-ordered it you I think you have to wait till November to get it now but I was fortunate enough to pre-order a couple and I uh, took one out of the box and I traveled to Miami and to Austin Texas and took some footage and got to know the a7s3 a little bit better because it is uh, different than using my a7 III so a couple things that I noticed right off the bat was the SD cards um, for the optimum usage of this camera and I say that um, to use all of the different codecs that it has the XAVC HSSSS uh, I'm sorry the eight the HS4K the S4K the SHD the SI4K and the SIHD you're gonna need the Sony Tough A memory card CF Express memory card which happen to all be sold out right now um, and the crazy part is you can only really use that when you're using 4K at 120 frames per second, which, um, you know, most of us will not use that as the files are tremendously big. And uh, you can get 4K 120 with any of the other codecs as well. It's just a, you know, it's just a huger file. You know what I mean? So... I would probably run away from that even though I do have a card that is capable of recording it I probably won't use it um, and I didn't get my tough a CF Ex Express card until I returned from my trip so the whole time I was on the trip I was using the uh, the SanDisk and Alexa I think um, just regular not not even like the beefed up ones and what you'll know is that with those basic cards you're only able to use I'm sorry you can use everything except for the HS 4k 120 frames per second but the other codecs you can use you just can't uh, 
you you just can't export them to your iPhone. So what happens is um, when you press the function key and it allows you to communicate with your iPhone or iDevice, you can upload that the images or videos directly to your phone. Well, those will not export. In fact, when you pull those into your um, computer, they don't even have an image. They just show you uh, like they don't have a preview image. Most of the videos, if you use the SHD, you'll see a preview image and those will offload directly to your phone and you can post right away. Like if you're like me, I like to post my images from my um, from my camera almost immediately, depending on the shots. Now, pictures, absolutely. Video, not so much. The video for the other codecs that you can use, which is the S4K, SI4K, or the SI HD, you have to pull that into your Final Cut, Adobe Premiere, whatever your NLE is. You have to bring it in there, and it'll convert it to where you can see what the files are. Otherwise, there's no image associated with it as a preview in your um, when you pull it onto your your file or your your folder on your desktop. So that's something to think about. I will try it once I get the other codecs in play. Um, I haven't done it yet. As like I said, I was on my trip and a majority of the time when I wanted to upload immediately, it was shot in uh, SHD. And you can do slow motion in SHD, which leads me to tip number, I don't know. Now let's go with tip number three. One of the dope things that I enjoyed doing, I didn't use the frame rate, com frame rate conversion often um i really only wanted to do slow motion so i shot in 120 frames per second and i um brought it down to 24 frames exported it at 24 frames per second which is one of the other cool features you can shoot in uh 24 30 uh, 60 or 120 frames and you can export it at whatever rate you want. Now also remember this, your export rate will determine how much of the footage gets manipulated, um, how slow it's gonna go, how fast it's gonna go. So you can actually shoot in, I don't, know, I don't know, 24 frames per second and export at 120, which will speed it up, which I thought that was cool. It does it all in the camera. You can see what it is right then. You can preview something that you might wanna try that with, which I think is like an awesome feature. Um, something that isn't readily knowledgeable um, will be how to take the battery base plate off now um, you can find this at the very 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 like second to last page in the manual uh, in how to do it because it's not readily if you look at it it doesn't have the little bar <clears throat> remember the little bar you had on the a73 where you could just slide the bar well, it doesn't have that. What it does have is this. If you look at the bottom here, there's a loop right there, and you gotta slide that over. And what that does is it allows for the, the pole or the pin that lodges the base plate in place to disappear and you can remove the base plate. Um, that's not common knowledge, and that would have been, you know, you'd have spent a long time trying to figure it out. No one online has a, even discussed that small nuance but if you're using a dummy battery which i would assume you are since this particular camera doesn't have a recording time limit you would use a dummy battery to to get the most out of using it for extended periods of times for a podcast or for a live vlogging or anything like that it won't shut off which is you know awesome and you'll want to use a dummy battery which will require you to take the base plate off for the battery lastly um, surprisingly uh, Sony has done something with their audio for this camera because it is really really good um, the clip that I'm going to post is directly out of the camera um, yes it's in a controlled environment but it sounds great um, I've got a couple clips I'm only gonna post the one but there are a couple other clips that I have where I was in the car and we were driving and you didn't pick up a lot of ambient noise from the outside you just picked up you know what you were saying to the person inside of the car it was really good the, the it was unbelievably clear 
without a microphone, without a Rode microphone on top or anything like that. It was really, really good. Let me just go on the record and tell y'all right now. The image quality of this is crazy. And I haven't even done it like to the max yet. This is just straight out the box, yo. Those are some of the exciting things that just taking it out of the box, getting on a plane and then traveling. Um, I'll put some footage along with this so you guys can see some of the things that uh, it did and did well. I don't really have any cons yet. Like I'm trying to think, was there something that bothered me about it? Other than the fact that I couldn't export all the different um, types of files and the non-preview. I really, there's not much, there's nothing I can say about the camera that uh, I, that wasn't really great. The touch screen is awesome. The navigation to the different uh, fields is awesome. If you can get your hands on the Sony A7S III, I think it's a game changer on a whole lot of levels. So if you got one, enjoy it, post and share what you know your pros and cons are. You'll see when I do what you know my camera rig. You're gonna be like, wow, that's dope. How um, you can set up a dual microphone system for interviewing. And it's not the traditional way that you think it is. It's actually, you know, dual in camera. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty dope. Anyway, if any of this helped you, press the like button. Subscribe as I flip between content, between music content and, of course, my video content. Because those are my passions. 